We're just looking down here at the head of the peloton. You can see as it's been for the last few kilometres, Orica Greenhead setting the pace, even Michael Matthews there in the red jersey in second place. But Movistar have started to move their riders to the front. We're just about a minute ahead now with these two riders. Yeah, we're approaching the climb now, and you can see that the peloton's getting a little bit nervous, and uh, the team's trying to make sure their leaders are well-placed. Uh, see uh, Katusha there for Rodriguez, also Sky were well up there. Peter Kennett was right at the front of the peloton as well. Katusha, they're going to be pretty confident, I think, which a test bed today for all of the tour favourites. This is a place where you could lose time, but basically they want to test each other. Who has got the legs going forward uh, this year in the Vuelta? And this is a real test. And I'll tell you what, after the display yesterday by Alberto Contador in particular and his team in general, nobody's thinking that Contador has come here now uh, just to try and find form. No, definitely not. I think he's proved that this last couple of days. He's got uh, intentions of doing more than just come for a stage win or two. I think he's got uh, pretensions of trying to win this Vuelta. He's done it twice before, but of course this time he's had a hairline fracture of the tibia. And that was in the Tour de France, and he's right here now. He's just tucking in and out, about fourth place down the line. Well, I must say, Michael Matthews, he's a sprinter. He's a little bit more than a sprinter, that's for sure. He's a very strong bike rider as well, but he's throwing his red jersey away uh, to support the team today. Let's not forget there are two leaders, and Peter Sagan's decided not to wait till the uh, hills bite. He's dropping off the back. Not at all interested. He hasn't raced much since uh, the midsummer, and now it looks to me as though he is uh, he's just riding along for the upcoming World Championships. Might be a different rider, also in Spain, by the way. Uh, team cars have now been pulled out from behind this breakaway, just got the neutral service uh, to cover them, and I th expect any minute we'll see these riders swept up. I think any minute, too, we're going to start the climb, because it's five kilometres, this climb. And the two leaders are going to take 30 seconds onto the finishing slopes today. Five kilometres, 30 seconds, it can't possibly happen for them now. What a great ride for both of them. Michael Matthews now, are these the death throes of the leader of the Vuelta for the last three days? Remember, he also led the Giro d'Italia this year for six days, and that's it. Matthews had done it for the team. Red jersey will be changed for team strip tomorrow. It's funny, we're actually seeing uh, Degenkolm do a similar job for uh, Warren Bargill, his teammate in Giant Shimano. Well, that's another name you mentioned there, Graham. He got two stage wins here last year as an up-and-coming uh, youngster. This year we expect more than that from Warren Boggy. This is Peter Kenyuk throwing it in. Who was incredibly active for a long, long way in the Commonwealth Games road race in Glasgow. But he actually threw the race away. He broke away early on and nobody went with him and he was compromised. But he gave it a great shot. The British champion. These are the two riders. Impetus going away. 17 seconds time to move everybody out of that gap. And this is where the climb starts. The left hand turns here. An this attack. is where it goes. Well, an attack, but he was quickly countered by uh, the King of the Mountains. If he did get to the top, he'd build himself quite a, a lead up there. But the 10 points on the top might be a little bit too far. Lewis Maas catches up with uh, Pim Ligtart. I think Ligtart's got his eyes on trying to uh, defend that combativity award by the looks of it, trying to be the last man to stay out. It's very difficult today to know who to give it to, to be absolutely honest, because they've shared all the prizes equally, they've shared all the pacemaking. Now, who's going to be the first to go here? Dan Martin's well placed there at the front. Garmin have been working for him today. And just scurrying up on the outside there, Steve Molobito, strong man when he comes to riding for Philippe Gilbert, particularly for Cadell Evans. It's like Castro Viejo who's doing the pacemaking now at the front of the peloton. There it is, 4.6 kilometres the length, uh, maximum gradient of 12.8%, an average gradient of around 8%. And there it is, I told you it was dead straight, it's a horrible climb because you're always going to see your rivals last two kilometers particularly are very uh, very tough very straight and uh, almost like it seems like the climb's never going to end well through the town of la zubia that's the last town before we go on to the climb itself now well P 
Pim Lidtart has really found himself uh, this in this tour. He was with Vacon Soleil with a team that disbanded. Lotto gave him a berth, and now he's uh, thanking them for that. This is a very, very good move, very strong, determined exit. And I think this might well confirm him as the most aggressive rider of the day for the second day here. Well, Le Mavel's the first one to attack from the peloton. At the moment, nobody else, uh, none of the favourites have really made a move just yet. And Le Mavel, who was once the best top finisher in the Tour de France when he finished ninth a few years back, is the rider behind, and it looks like he might be first to reach Ligtart. Dan Martin there, being uh, well supported. Cardoso sitting alongside uh, Dan Martin, looking after him. I quite fancy Dan Martin to do something today. It's his, his sort of climb, not too long. Now, riders starting to just continue the pace. This is a very difficult climb to judge your effort here because you can see most of it all the way up. Just moving up to the front there. Looks like it was Dimitri Konjunchuk on Team Katusha, trying to get control of the peloton. That's the man down at the bottom of our picture. And he's preparing the ground for Rodriguez. Pim Ligtart, really three kilometers to go. They're right on him now. Le Mervel trying to come up. His last big performance, Christophe Le Mervel, when he finished fourth, and it was also in Spain, in the north, in San Sebastian, in the San Sebastian Classic. Very good ride for a Frenchman in that event, too. Uh, three kilometres to go, it's all over. Pim Ligtart uh, led this race for 164 and a half kilometres. But now they're all together at three to go. Still making the pace on the front here as the pack are now all together, except for those who are being left behind. They're climbing this, Graham, at 14 kilometres an hour, an average gradient of just on 9%. Yep, still nobody attacked yet. The, the but you, see, you can see it splitting now. We've got probably 20 riders, just over 20 riders in that front part. And this is all the work by uh, Kontenchuk here. This is the chaos now at the back of the race as they start to go off. I've just seen a Niemic going off for Lamprey. That's a bit of a surprise. And Danny Moreno, that was, who's just gone off as well. He was a candidate, I would have thought, for a possible podium at the top, but he's gone. Well, Quintana's looking comfortable there. You see Ten Dam as well from Belkin just tucked in there about six places back. Valverde. Yeah, the top two from Movistar on the right, Valverde and Quintana, are here. Now, just tucked in, in the middle, that looks to me like it is the champion of South Africa, which is the youngster in his first Grand Tour, Louis Menkes. From the top here. And yes, it is. He's just popping into our picture there. Also there, too, we've got the leading jersey in the combine, which means Menkes' teammate is here, Pardia. He's possibly their man for the top today. Now, this is just going to be a wall of attrition on this climb. It's a dead straight climb. They're just going to keep on grinding up it and hoping they all survive to the end. Roman Seacard is 81. And that is Menkees just in front of him, the young champion of South Africa, beginning to slip a little bit now. Pardia is down here, though. He's wearing the white jersey of the combine leader. And that's the man, the MTN Quebec squad from Africa. And that, by the way, seeing, I've just seen it then, it's worth remembering, Graham, that this is the first time that the African squad and any African squad has ever worn a leader's jersey here in the welter. Chris Froome there sitting on the wheel of Contador as well. So we're seeing all the favourites. Um, nobody looks like they're losing time at the moment. It's Caruso of Katusha losing contact. Yes, and uh, this is simply a matter of if you can't, uh, you can't keep take the heat, you've got to get out the oven, I'm afraid. George Bennett going off as well, and it's all down to Alejandro Valverde. He's had a great season this year. He spends so much time in front of our television cameras. He will try to the limit. He thinks he's racing through. He'll attack downhill or uphill. 
Quintana puffing and blowing a little bit, uh, Nero Quintana, but not in any difficulty at the moment. And Chavez is uh, just tucked in there, he's number 182. Martin's just losing contact now, as well, that's a surprise. That is a big surprise, especially after the work his team has done for him all day today. Also slipping off the back there, Adam Yates in his first tour. Neil Stevens says he's trying to tell him not to work so hard, otherwise he won't finish this tour, he just won't stop working. And he's taking it a bit hard at the moment. Chavez is in the third place here, might spring the surprise of the day. Contador is here, Froome is here. Anacona is going off the back, and also going off the back here is Wilco Kelderman. And that's a little bit of a surprise. He's not enjoyed these early hot days, but look at this now. We're getting down to a group of about 10 or 11 men. Now, we've got uh, the two top riders from Team Sky right at the front. The first one is Mikel Nieve, and the one on our left is Chris Froome, the Tour de France winner in 2013, and who actually came to the top of the uh, wanted list of all the teams uh, when he finished second in the Tour. A few years ago now, he spent the whole tour working with Bradley Wiggins and in the end he was the better rider and he finally finished second behind a Kobo. Incredible pace making by Valverde. He's kept this form now right through the Tour de France. He's just hurting everybody and his job now is simply to soften them all up in favour of the youngster behind him there from Colombia who's not showing, uh, not giving us any idea what he's thinking right now. He looks cool. Well, Valverde at the moment certainly looks like he's working uh, for Quintana. It's, it's, it's Valverde that's really doing the damage. Pardia has just come off the back of that group. He's about five metres behind now. Being cheered on by that spectator running alongside. But these two riders, one by one, are unshipping everybody. Froome said he was going to have the time trial of his life up this mountain, and maybe he wasn't joking. His head is up and down, checking on everybody. Chavez is gritting his teeth in third. What a piece of riding this is by Alejandro Valverde. Uh, Fabio Aru as well is lo looking good there, rider from Astana, looking strong. But Rodriguez is there sitting quietly. But who's going to attack? I'm not sure anybody can if Valverde keeps riding like this. He got the big classic in Spain, the San Sebastian Classic, uh, earlier this month, just after the Tour de France. He's had the red jersey on for one day after stage two. Just nine riders nine left. Gone. Nine left. Contador still there, the man who thought he wouldn't be competitive until the last week of this race because of his horrific injuries from the Tour de France. He's just sitting there. He's just looking like he's never been anywhere because he always rides in and out of the saddle, Alberto. He'll be gritting his teeth a little bit, but for me, the one who's looking the most comfortable is Quintana. Froome, sometimes you can never tell, spinning a gear a lot lower than anybody else. Just looking over to the left there, Fabio Aro of Astana. He's only 50 seconds off the race lead, but it's off the two riders in front. A little move on on the left. Now they've got to go for him. That's it, Joachim Rodriguez. And look at the acceleration. Good reaction. No problem at all. Valverde straight after him. Froome puts his head down and lifts those that cadence a little bit more. And behind him, Quintana has answered. Contador has answered. Aru looked a little bit slower trying to answer. Chavez got caught. He's drifting away. And look how that's broken it up. Yeah, that's certainly split, that, that move, a real acceleration, but Valverde, still doing all that work, has managed to follow him. Well, Rodriguez is either very confident or a little bit daft, because, quite frankly, he's gone very early here, but he has broken that breakaway up. And who's quietly sitting at the back of yeah. this group there is Alberto Contador. But he knows how he's a champion. He, he's suffering, there's no doubt that Contador is suffering, but here he comes, straight around Quintana. Has he caught Quintana here because Contador moves up, Rodriguez, and now look at the face of on the Valverde on the right, and Chris Froome. Is this the time trial he was referring to at the start today? He said he would time trial his way to the summit. He's shoulder to shoulder with Valverde. Well, Valverde looks, uh, they've got to be the favourite out of this group actually for this stage win, and if he does, and with Quintana being dropped, it could be Valverde that takes the jersey. What a horrible climb this is, it's so straight and Valverde has found more 
He's come again on the right. Is Valverde going to finish this off? Because if he does, he's the next man in red. Chris Froome is trying to come for him, and Contador's a star. Contador also getting onto the back wheel of Valverde, but Valverde is the winner on the day. He's back in red. Froome is second. He's up for the fight. Contador, well, there's your answer. Contador is now up for this year's welter. Crosses the line in third place. Rodriguez perhaps did it a little bit early, but he can hardly stay upright. Somebody needs to catch him. But also we saw that Quintana also suffering. Yeah, that's a surprise. I thought he might have been there. He did say he wasn't sure. Maybe this uh, climb was too early in the race for him. But Valverde, with all that work he did, still managed to win the stage, and they just may well change tactics. Now, while Spanish TV pursued Alberto Contador, Rigoberto Oran and Adam Yates came in a minute down, while Dan Martin, who'd finished just ahead of them, lent on a car to keep himself up. <laughs> Let's check the result then. Alejandro Valverde, Chris Froome and Alberto Contador were all given the same time, eight seconds ahead of Joaquin Rodriguez. Nairo Quintana lost 12 seconds, Fabio Aru 18. Then came Esteban Chavez and Daniel Navarro. Mikel Nieve rode strongly all day for his team leader. Robert Hezink overtook Wilco Kelderman for Belkin. Warren Barguil of team giant Shimano was 11th. Dan Martin, Rigoberto Oran and Adam Yates were 18th, 19th and 20th. Alejandro ha ganado, eh, pero para mí esto también es una victoria, ¿no? Eh, no me podía imaginar estar entre los 10 primeros y mira, casi está luchando por, por la victoria de etapa. Eh, estoy contento, de momento las la rodillas son eh, pinchazos ocasionales los, los que me da, que no son constantes, no me impiden eh, pedalear. Cruzo los dedos para que, que siga de esta manera y a ver si también pues mi condición va mejorando poco a poco. Uh, Rodriguez has shown he's really strong and Contador, Contador you've seen he's, he's just fine after his injuries. Are you satisfied with today? Um, yeah, I mean I'm, I'm happy we did, I didn't really lose any more time today. Um, and yeah, for myself it's been a long time without intense racing so I'm really happy with that and I've got the team to thank, they did a fantastic job positioning me today and I really... Uh, I owe being up there to them today. If Mobistar are the team to beat, I suppose the question that follows is which of Mobistar's riders is going to turn out to be the man to beat. It's a long race, of course, but Alejandro Valverde was the best today. Luis Mas had a good day too, extending his lead in the King of the Mountains competition. Now the first mountain finish has given the standings a much more business-like look. Valverde now leads the race by 15 seconds from his teammate Nairo Quintana. Alberto Contador is up to third at 18 seconds. Chris Froome is 22 seconds back in fourth. Then it's Esteban Chavez, Joaquin Rodriguez, Robert Hezink and Fabio Aru. He's the last man within a minute of the race lead. Warren Barguil is at 102. Rigoberto Aran drops from 4th to 14th at 118. And Dan Martin is now a minute 37 back on Alejandro Valverde. Sigues manteniendo que el líder del equipo es Nairo y que tú a pasártelo bien y ayudarle. Sí, sí, sí. De hecho se ha visto que he cogido yo la marcha desde abajo a un ritmo bastante fuerte para quedar muy fuerte. Y bueno, y durante los días se me va viendo que estoy ahí, que estoy por delante, que me da un poco el viento. Pero bueno, eso no quita que si me encuentro bien se pueda ganar alguna victoria de etapa. Y Nairo sigue estando ahí y, y bueno, luego vendrá más montaña y, y bueno, vamos a ver, pero seguro que estará muy bien. So, his second red jersey of this race. The first was by default and he had to be called out of the team bus to get it. Today's was one to really celebrate. <laughs>